So in your opinion, do you have uh, near-term 43101 resources in both the gold and the uranium properties? Yes, we have one in the gold right now, 300,000 ounces. We're looking to increase that by the end of this year, hopefully to towards the million ounce. Uh, nothing is a promise or a guarantee in this game, but uh, you have to plan ahead. And the same thing for the K9 uranium property. If we could do sufficient work, the 10,000 meters of drilling that is planned, uh, we will have a very good idea as to the size potential of that property. And by completing the additional 10,000 meters, as was stated late in 2007, uh, we should have, at that point, a uh, much better indication, not just the full potential, but the, the quality of the uranium resource. And there, it's, uh, it, the model is a little different in that area. Uh, we're not looking for the high grade, uh, low volume type, like in the Athabasca Basin, but it's, uh, it's a different approach, and we can talk about that later. So. Okay. One of the recent press releases, in fact, on the K9 uranium properties contained good news, um, but the market seemed to consider this negative news. Was the press release too technical? It may have been too technical, and that's probably uh, my responsibility since uh, I'm more technical uh, uh, oriented. But uh, the idea was to, uh, to have continuous disclosure. We had the information. Uh, therefore, it's important to give it out to uh, the shareholders. Some people appreciated it. Others uh, wanted something different. But uh, at this point, I think uh, if we can put out news on a uh, twice month basis uh, on what we're doing, your activities, updates, and obviously results. Uh, I think it's favorable. There's no surprises in the end. And, uh, you know, that's, that's an important approach and one that I feel that uh, we need to do as a company. Keep, keep the communication flowing. That's right. Um, you mentioned that you were looking for K9 to be a Rossing type uranium deposit. What exactly is that? And how do we get K9 to a mineable resource? Rossing is a, is a fairly large uh, uranium mine in Namibia, in West Africa. It's run by Rio Tinto, um, and it's been in operation for uh, approximately 30 years. It, it started as a very small operation, but now um, it's, it's grown bigger. They have uh, um, roughly, uh, I think it's 5,000 tons uh, a year of production of, uh, of uranium. And uh, what it is, is it's disseminated type uranium, uh, similar to the Carlin type gold, which is disseminated. It's very low grade. We're talking of grades of 0.01%, uh, uh, which is less than a pound uh, per ton. But uh, with prices, uh, with our recent prices uh, surge in the, you know, the 60 to $100 range, it's quite economic. Um, and it's not unique in the world. The rocks hosting at Rossing are quite common in the, in the Canadian Shield, for instance. And we've known historically that these rocks in Canada do contain uranium, low grade. They've been explored for that before. But uh, we haven't been able to advance them in the past because the price of uranium has been low. But with the surge in price now, uh, Bonaventure is not the only company uh, looking for this uh, type of model. There's several others. And uh, the next few years will be important for us to uh, advance as quickly as possible, uh, prove up some resources of, for this type of model, and uh, have success. So the shareholders and stakeholders will see that uh, you know, we're putting our money where our mouth is, right? So. <laughs> well, now you talked about then the future of uranium looks to be in the range of $90, you know, according to not only you, but a lot of industry experts. So is this because of the planned expansion of nuclear plants in China, India, Europe, and other areas of the world? And so is there a real shortage of uranium that will then be needed to meet this demand? Yes, the, the big surge right now is because of oil and hydrocarbons. The price of it is very high, so one has to look for alternative sources. Um, yes, there's wind, there's solar. Uh, uranium is, uh, is one approach also. Um, it is a commodity that's very common in the Earth's crust, and so that uh, we can explore for. And if the price is there, if there is a shortage of it, which there is right now, uh, most of the uranium is, uh, comes from uh, um, basically armaments now, um, decommissioning of armaments, so there is uh, availability there, but it's, uh, it's a finite uh, time limit to that. And we do not have uh, metal reserve or rock reserves, mineral reserves of that. Uh, there's uh, an acute shortage. So if we're planning to build the 400 or so reactors in the next uh, 20 years, uh, there's definitely a shortage of uranium. And uh, Canada being a, a big uranium producer, we produce close to 30% of uh, the world uh, consumption right now. Um, we 
if we to remain at the forefront. And since we have good geological endowment, we have excellent uh, uh, political stability, and we have uh, good incentives, then it's a great place to do exploration. That's why Bonaventure is, uh, was opportunistic in, in going this way. So having said that, um, and we know that uranium prices in, in the long term will probably float towards the $100 uh, level. Um, it's, it's probably not um, unrealistic to think that it may not stay like, it may stay like that for the next 10 to 15 years. Now's the time to do the exploration because there's usually about a five to 10 year window before you can find and develop uh, resources. And that's why Rossing is so important because you can actually do this in a much shorter window. It's an open pitable type resource at surface. It's very easy to evaluate. It's only from zero to uh, 100 meter depth. Um, and you can have resources fairly quickly, and assuming the mineralization is there. So to me, it's, it's a good venue. Yeah, you just said the future looks bright for Bonaventure. Is that correct? Yes. 